Right. So here's another super chat comment. Uh, and I meant to mention this, uh, 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 the gentleman who fired in the Greenwood mall in Indiana, uh, shot the active shooter being reported. He fired 10 rounds at 40 yards, got eight hits, which is unbelievable performance folks. I, I, I don't imagine for a moment I could replicate that performance myself under that kind of stress. Um, I be, his name was Elisha. Was it Elisha Dickens? Sorry, I, I don't have a page open for that. Uh, fired 10 shots from, I think, about 40 yards away. Eight hits are being reported. Uh, extremely impressive. And folks, I'm a guy who's been an active competitive shooter for many, many, many years. Uh, I just took a class this weekend, uh, Modern Samurai Project Red Dot Pistol course this weekend, where we had to sight in our pistols as one of the first exercises on day one. Uh, and we did it at 10 and 25 yards. Um, and I got my hits fine, uh, but there was no stress. And it wasn't 40 yards. 40 yards under stress, pretty, pretty tough. I guess with the dot, I probably would have hit it too, if I think about it, really, if I was taking my time. But he did it quick. Anyway, I know there's a lot of professional instructors and shooters doing replication videos on YouTube, so you can look at them for that. And it, it doesn't appear that Elisha Dickens had hit any innocent bystanders, right? But he could have, right? There could have been people behind, two of the rounds at least missed. Where'd they go? They could have hit an innocent bystander. Would Dickens have had legal liability if he'd hit an innocent bystander under those circumstances? I would suggest, based on the legal principles we talked about today, the answer is no. Even if he had hit and killed an innocent bystander, his use of force in defense of others, and defense of others has the same five elements as self-defense, his use of force in defense of others was completely justified in targeting that active shooter with deadly defensive force in defense of others. That good intent follows those rounds. Um, and therefore, even if a, uh, two of those rounds, the two rounds that missed, had hit and killed innocent bystanders, it would have been with that justified intent, that non-reckless intent. Um, and by the way, what's evidence that the two rounds are fired non-recklessly? That the other eight hit the target at 40 yards. I mean, that was not a guy firing recklessly. You don't get eight out of 10 hits on a torso at 40 yards if you're firing recklessly. Um, and Mimi, $5 Super Chat, thank you. Uh, Elisha's lawyer, Guy Relford, is a firearms instructor and has been posting on Twitter. I'd love to see an interview with him. Uh, I'd, I'd love to interview him. I don't, I don't know who he is or how to get in touch with him. But if uh, if anybody wants to message him and tell him that I'd love to have him uh, be a, a guest interview on my Law Self-Defense channel, uh, I'd love to hear from him and uh, have him on for sure.